What an exciting time to live with technology. This is a never ending subject. Another AI robot, another pre-order. Well, but this one, you're not gonna see this until 2026. Now today we're looking at the Neo, a humanoid robot from the company X1. And they'll say it will bridge AI and real world labor. Now, this could be potentially the most futuristic, intriguing, interesting, full-sized humanoid robot that lives with you and does all the things that you don't have time for. But this story isn't just about robotics. It's about timing, trust, and the user experience before the product even exists. Now, we've seen this before, the Rabbit R1, the human AI pin products that promised revolutionary AI experiences, but reached users, well, simply half-baked. Now, the Neo seems to be following well, a similar pattern, and it's not finished, but yet pre-orders are open. Pre-orders can be placed. And the wait, well, it's up to two years. <laughs> you heard me, two years. Now, pre-ordering can make sense for software, so we're not saying that it doesn't work at all in any kind of launch strategy. But it's not just for software where it can make sense. It can make sense for games as well, or even early access tools. But you see, when it comes to physical products, especially robots like the Neo, expectations are different. They're very different. Pre-order the Neo today and get it in 2026 at best. <laughs> now imagine a warehouse, just for a minute full of identical humanoid robots waiting in line, like something straight out of, um, mm, sounds familiar, a robot. But jokes aside, it makes you wonder, are we once again chasing the AI dream faster than reality can keep up? It does make you think. But from a UX perspective, this isn't just about whether the Neo works or not. See, this is about the user being asked to believe when a company pre-orders a product that isn't fully realized, the trust experience begins long before the first unboxing. If the communication transparency and roadmap don't align with what is shown in the marketing, then trust simply just weakens. Now, UX isn't about how your product feels in your hand. It isn't just about that. It's about how credible it feels in your mind. Now, what UX activities could help companies like the X1 avoid the kind of gap we've just described? Well, number one, expectation mapping. Here is where you want to identify what users will assume versus what you can actually deliver. Number two, transparent journey prototypes. Well, you will want to map the full journey from pre-order all the way to that ownership then you want to stress test the waiting experience itself. Now you can, if you chose to, create a hybrid of diary studies where during this waiting experience, you're able to read documented evidence of how these customers feel waiting for the product to be delivered. And then you can try and map that as highs and lows, peaks and troughs throughout that period of time, and then try to adjust how you market things in future, whether that's a future iteration of the Neo or something that perhaps works as an accessory to the Neo function and even better in somebody's home. And number three, finally, technically, well, it's just number four because we've got a bonus. Now, our number four is feedback loops before launch, not after, but before. Now, this is where you involve early supporters in usability testing. Now, this isn't just marketing up, you're actually putting the robot through its paces with real people in everyday living, not just uh, you could say created scenarios designed specifically to help the Neo navigate safely. So this isn't going to be marketing hype in this sense, as we've seen perhaps on social media so far. This is the real world testing. Now, these steps can keep ambition grounded in credibility, and they can build the kind of trust that sustains innovation. Now, the Neo could genuinely change how humans and robots collaborate together. And if that's, and if that's the case, I would be genuinely excited to see what the next steps would be in terms of how humans interact with 
robots with technology in general. That could change everything. But a visionary product deserves a visionary rollout. Do you think this is a visionary rollout? Well, you see, here's the thing. You launch too early and innovation can start to feel like speculation. But what do you think? Do you think the X1 is being smart or do you think it's, well, simply moving too fast? Remember to stay present, stay curious. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.